because I've had a lot of requests for this, I've wanted to do um, a video of uh, you receiving your flute. I've sold a lot of these lately. These are the new backpacker flutes and notice uh, that they don't have the animal fetish that I normally put on them. Uh, and uh, I created these during COVID because I was doing some inner work and I didn't want any distractions, but I've got another video series on that that I'm more than happy to share with you. I want you to notice too that I started maybe at about a thousand, I think this is 1,074 of uh, burning the ends of these flutes uh, so that uh, your mouth doesn't touch the lacquer that's uh, put on here to that the lacquer really helps create uh, the sound, the warmth uh, and the resonance uh, on the flute, but you don't need it on the end touching your lips. It's toxic. Uh, so I used a wood burner on that. And, uh, and so uh, when, when you first get your flute, the first thing I want, want you to notice is every time I pick up a flute, I'll put it under my arm and I'll tighten this and I'll straighten the block. Now, what I'm doing there is if I take this back and I show this to you, you'll notice that there's two holes. There's one back here and there's one up here. You want the block to be right at the back of that front hole. Because if you have it too far forward, you'll get these squeaks and squawks or nothing. If you have it too far back, you'll get a real breathy sound like this. So if you have it right to the back of that hole and make sure that the strap is tight, uh, you're going to get a really nice, clear, clear sound. Now, you may be perplexed when you first get your get your flute uh, because you don't know how yet. You don't know what it's supposed to do. Now, I'm not going to do to you what my uh, my teacher did to me, uh, Lewis Webster. Um, a beautiful man who taught me how to make these flutes in the first place, and I owe a debt of gratitude to him, of course. Uh, but when uh, he was a great flute player, and I asked him one day, I said, Lewis, can you teach me how to play the flute? And he said, nope, that's the flute's job, but I'll give you a hint. Hang around watery places, the water spirits will teach you. So I spent the whole summer hanging around lakes, and, and, and I live in Wisconsin, so uh, there's a lot of beautiful lakes and rivers that I could hang with, and I learned how to play the flute. And, um, you know, by the way, all the squeaks and squawks are things that you're working out internally, and the flute will teach you, but more of that on a different video series that I'm doing uh, as well on YouTube. Uh, you might want to look for that one uh, as well. But that's that that one I'm going more in depth on uh, what the flute is really about and, and how it teaches you along the way. But let me give you just some hints uh, as you begin your flute. What I like to do is to is get people to first. And by the way, it does not matter which hand goes on top. It depends on which one you feel comfortable with. If you're playing a transverse flute, you would play it like this with the left hand on top. I happen to play with my right hand on top, and it hasn't stopped me uh, a bit over the years. But what I find is that people will first get their flute and they try to cover all six holes, and they'll end up with something like this. Get, get discouraged, put it on the wall as a wall hanging, and it's never heard from again. So I'm gonna encourage you to start with three holes. The first one is that little hole down here, and that has a place, but it's not going to be for a while. That's a more advanced lesson. But put your third finger on the third hole, your uh, this finger here, and then your uh, pointer finger here. And uh, that's where you want it. And you're only going to be lifting these two fingers, okay? And you lift this one first, this one, and come back, and come back here. This is the sound that you're going to get. little 
hammer-ons I'm doing give you that sound. That's a continuous air blow as I hammer down on the, on the note. Now, uh, and, and this is, so I'm not just sending you out saying, well, you know, let the flute let, uh, teach you, uh, at least, and then what I do is I add one finger at a time. And then you add the next finger. And finally, the sixth. So, see, even Dennis has trouble sometimes finding the holes on the flute. Uh, now, that's at least, you know, it gives you a start. Uh, but there's a few things I want you to remember as you're starting to learn how to play your flute. Uh, there are things that were taught to me that I think are really, really important. Uh, uh, one is that this is a spiritual instrument. That that was taught to me right away by uh, Bill Miller, my wife's cousin, um, who just reminded me this is a spiritual instrument, and so it should be uh, cared for in that way. And then Basil Braveheart, a Lakota elder, uh, because I had the opportunity to play with him after healing ceremonies often, uh, he would say, Dennis, the instrument is like our pipe. It sends prayers to the Creator, uh, often prayers too deep for words. Uh, man, that, that has stuck with me and resonated with me. And then it, it, this is really a, a, an incredible tool for meditation. The reason for that is there it, it allows two of the basic elements of meditation to, to be engaged and gives you a bonus of a third. The two are our focus and our breath because it's hard to focus on playing your flute and focus on all the junk that goes around in our heads at the same time. And that's what meditation does. It keeps our focus away from all the junk for at least a period of time, training our mind uh, to be cleaner and clearer. At the same time, uh, the flute is focusing our breath. You can't play the flute without focusing your breath. And so the element of focus and the element of breath are both contained in learning to play this flute. Uh, beautifully, the flute is is fairly simple to learn. Uh, some of you are going to say, Dennis, this is not simple. Um, give it some time. And remember what I said at the beginning that, um, you know, all the squawks and squeaks uh, that you hear and are working out as you're learning to play the flute are really you learning or you taking the squawks and squeaks out of your life. Now, here's the third plus that you get with uh, the Native American style flute as you're playing it. And that is the, 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 the fee feedback. Uh, it's sending, the flute is sending vibrations into the air and they're coming back to your ears, but not just to your ears, and it comes back to your body. But it forms a circle of healing, uh, really. So your breath is going out, it's coming out in this beautiful sound that resonates uh, wherever you're playing and it's coming back to your body and it's healing your body at the same time. Uh, I've been playing these flutes for, you know, over 35 years. And I, I can't tell you, you know, I, when I'm having a tough day, I go grab my flute. And I hope you'll learn to do the same thing because it's immediate, it, it immediately calms me and uh, puts me in a better place than I was uh, before I touched it. And uh, I hope it will become part of your daily practice uh, as well. So with that, uh, I will say good night. Good night. It's not night. It's actually daytime here. I'll say goodbye. And um, like Lewis Webster told me, follow the voice of the flute. <laughs>